What's up guys, Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys a week 3 match for NCL Season 8, Zip Strika, taking on Dom and the Cleveland S Cavaliers. We'll just send the challenge here. If you haven't seen the team builder, definitely check that out. Heavily recommend checking that out. I do go wildly quickly in depth about where oh, fucking Corviknight's here. I was going to be rejoicing if the Corviknight was not here. Okay, so Garchomp, Cresselia, Araquanid, Morpico... Mega DNC Corviknight. This is good. We don't see Swellow. Swellow was going to be a little bit of a challenge to deal with. So now this actually opens up my Kecleon to be a little bit better against the um, against the uh, duh, duh, duh. Corviknight. I don't know what he is expecting out of Scissor into a Corviknight, but you know that's just me or a Meg Mortar, but whatever. Just link the game here, turn myself off on battle times since the game is of finite. Well, assuming finite. So, you know, I don't know. He brought some stuff. <laughs> There's some stuff that's been brought. In terms of a lead matchup, it really only makes sense for me to just lead Rotom. And honestly, it leads well against everything anyways, so I think I'm fine just leading it. Um, just because Rotom's my best Araquanid dancer, so I'm just going to lead it against the uh, Araquanid, or what I presume to be the Araquanid leading. Uh, I am clear. I didn't mention that in my uh, in my builder, but I am clear body Dragapult uh, to avoid the web, so I will outspeed everything. Except more Pico after an Aura Wheel boost, so we're going to have to play around that. If he's clicking Aura Wheel, we need to. Um, play around what aura wheel he's going to be. Potentially I can bypass that by clicking Phantom Force or something. Um, so, I don't really know if I have anything else to say. Uh, my build was pretty fast this week. I didn't really have anything super in-depth that I wanted to put together for this one. I was pretty down about the week before, and I kind of just sped speed built or sped built um all of my teams for the week on, on sunday this week so i just got it out of the way and then uh relaxed for the rest of it so i was expecting to be viewing uh or putting in an offer on a condo and that didn't happen so my whole week kind of got messed up by that but I, I was trying to be as prepared as possible so that i could avoid any situation where i was trying to play a game and uh have to go out on the same day um so I guess I didn't really prep very well for the Morpico, but Nido Queen is fine for that. It's probably gonna have like psychic things or something. Interesting, Mega Um I could go really ballsy here. Let him set up rocks or whatever. He doesn't actually kill me with anything. I could just pump him in the face. I pretty much lose nothing for that, and he actually has to be scared scared a little bit of uh I mean, he could attack me, right? Like, he could attack me. That's always a possibility, and I don't actually have anything besides, like, Ice Punch or whatever to hit this with, with Kecleon, but Hydro Pump is pretty free. So, I'm actually just going to click it. If he's in regular form, he'll live, and he could, like, set rocks in regular, but I live the Moonblast. I get a little bit of Lefty's recovery back. Should still be able to live a hit from Araquanid. Live a hit from Garchomp, you know? It's important that my Rotom's alive to be able to defog uh, webs so that my Gardevoir can break and stuff, but if I can release a little bit of the burden off of Kecleon this early um, and then be able to just set rocks whenever I want because the Mega dnc has gone, uh, that's ideal. So please tell me we hit. That did a lot more than I expected. I do hit and we do kill. So great turn one for me, except not really because this Modest DNC just bopped me in the face. Why are you running Modest DNC against my team? Does he not realize that he's just going to get outsped by Mega Gardevoir? Like, that doesn't really make sense to me. When he was building, did he not think that I was going to creep more Pico with Mega Gardevoir? And so you run Modest? Or was he anticipating having webs up so that he could still run Modest and still outspeed Mega Gardevoir? That's the only scenario I can think of there. So he underestimated my, underestimated my removal. Um... And I would have been in a much better position if he was not modest. But I'm very thankful that we at least hit the Hydro Pump. Because uh, that could have been really bad. But we get a kill off the bat, so yay, no 6-0. Uh, 
and now one of our best Corviknight answers is dead. Yay! So I'm pretty confident that this gets Psychic Fangs. It does indeed get Psychic Fangs, so we need to be a little bit careful about this. I don't want to screw around with this. This is a really powerful Pokemon right here, right now. Nidoqueen tanks Psychic Fangs. But it wouldn't tank Auroweal into Psychic Fangs, and what if Auroweal is dark? It won't even change the move to dark. I hate this so much. I hate this so, so much. Uh, does the original typing have to be dark for it to change? No. Great. That's just fantastic. So I could go Nidoqueen here. I don't know what to do. Like I can outspeed this if it gets a plus one boost. Um, obviously I don't tank two Psychic Fangs, so I, I don't know. I don't think I have another option. He's just gonna Parting Shot. Okay, that's actually better for me. Better kind of for me. Uh, I do think a Raccoonid is coming in, which is bad for me. And now I can't sack, uh, because this more Picos around, I can't sack this Needle Queen whenever I want. I need to keep it healthy for this stupid more Pico, which I assume has Psychic Fangs for me. It does get Ice Fang as well, I believe. It does get Ice Fang, but Psychic Fangs is stronger, so you'd always run Psychic Fangs against my team. Because I don't have a second ground. And the only other thing I have that's weak to Ice is weak to uh, Dark Aura Sphere from Hangry Mode. Yeah, that's about what I thought. Um, I'm not going to be able to dent this at all. He's probably just going to Oko me. If I'm being real, he does actually just Oko me. I could Toxic, though. And minus one special attack. Thunderbolt doesn't even dent this. Um, I'm a little bit wary of just switching Rotom Washin, but I do live a Liquidation unless it's banded. So let's find out. He's just going to get up the webs. Uh, that does mean that I'm going to be able to go for Thunderbolt, question mark? I can go for damage. Let's assume he's max HP, max attack, because that's generally the set, right? I would two-shot with Thunderbolt. Uh, I'm going to go for the damage. Yeah, we do two-shot with Thunderbolt. He predicted my defog. Uh, and now I'm going to defog now. <laughs> Unless he's banded into Sticky Web, which would be strange. He could definitely be banned. I think he's Boots. I think he's Boots, though, based on that. Uh, and it looks like I got a little bit of a low roll against max HP. So I'm not going to risk the more Pico coming in on this. I'm just going to defog. I, I don't know. A lot of people like to complain about Showdown. Um, Dom's not usually one of them. You guys can't see this, it's, it's lower, but he's saying that he clicked a different move. All right, so now we get the defog off on the more Pico coming in. Uh, we still don't know what this is, is my thing. So I'm gonna take this neutrally anyways. Last time, I don't live Aura Wheel from Banded, if this is Banded. Um, I'm gonna will o -Wisp. He's not banded. Oh, he's not banded. Please hit. Nice, 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 nice. So that's actually pretty big. That is pretty, pretty, pretty big. Um, I'm gonna go into Needle Queen this time. He's probably just gonna parting shot though. Ah, oh, he's psychic things. Okay, so that's actually really good for me now. Uh, because this means that the Araquanid is not a threat. This means the Araquanid is not a threat if it comes in on me because I can always kill it. Uh, so I'm going to Toxic. And the Toxic damage, even at minus one, I should be able to kill this Araquanid, I'd imagine, at this point now. Uh, not so much, but we get the Toxic off on the Cresselia. Guaranteed hit on the, on the Cresselia, too, which is great for me. So, I will just go into Kecleon. We don't chew that Psy Shock as well as I would like, but we can sort of scout out some damage here. So, Cresselia. Psy Shock. 
You know, it'd be wild as if he did have Lunar Dance. Uh, looks like he got a bit of a high roll with no investment. So I'm just going to set up my rocks here. Ah, one thing I didn't think of is I actually get outsped by Araquanid. I'm going to Thunder Punch. I get outsped by the Araquanid. I don't like that. We catch it. Do we kill? It's Helmet. Oh, that's good information, actually. It's Helmet. Um, am I not running any speed investment for Arachnid on this? I'm not. I'm not running any. He, he's just naturally going to outspeed me. I, I don't like this. I do not like this. I, I don't actually need Kecleon for all that much, but it's still useful for the Cresselia. I think I would want... I'm not going to be able to get in my Rotom on anything else to defog. I, I think I have to go Rotom here and either just sack it or get up webs. Yeah. Okay, so I'm actually fine with sacking there. Um, because it means that I will be able to get a hit off with Gardevoir, which should threaten everything. And that would be my best option, right? Or is Neo being my best option? No, I think Gardevoir is. So we trace Water Bubble, and I'll just be able to get a hit off on whatever. Um, if I'm him, I'm not. I'm not going to bother saving this but also if i'm here actually i do want to see exactly what his investment was because thunder punch should have done a lot and it did nothing uh which tells me 35 he's physically defensive oh he is very physically defensive he's very 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 physically defensive mystical fire is not going to kill but Hyper Voice would. Do I die to Corviknight Iron Head? Nope. Mystical Fire is not really touching that either, to be fair. But Hyper Voice does more. So I'm just going to Hyper Voice. And like I thought, he's just going to sack this, which is great for me. Opens up Infernape a little bit more, too. The Cresselia is toxic. The Morpico is burnt. He actually is forced to go Corviknight here. Um, the guard chomp's not going to be able to kill me unless it's banded. Uh, actually, life orb is a chance to kill with earthquake. Or uh, if it's jab life orb, then it definitely kills me too. Uh, actually, it's only rolled. Yeah, I like bulky guard war. Good stuff. Good stuff. Cresselia is not going to be able to come in and one v one me. Yeah, he had he had to go in Corvina here. Uh, I'm actually also fine clicking mystical fire. I think that's my play. I don't like the idea of Brave Bird coming off here. So, I could just raw Mystical Fire, which doesn't do a ton. If I'm plus one, it's doing half, but then he would just kill me. I, I think I just have to go for the damage. Scouted out, 38. U-turn was 22. So he's definitely not going to be like a bulk upset if he's got U-turn, which is good. 22 is a bit of a high roll. He'll definitely kill me with Garchomp at this point. Um, and I sacked my Rotom. So I'm going to have to go into something else. Mystical Fire Damage, though. I do want to see the Mystical Fire Damage. Neutral, 34. I did 38. So this is definitely specially defensive. Which now opens up my Dragapult to... Oh, I can't see what that's at. Oh, really? This is a curious play. Uh, I'm just going to Calm Mind in his face. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And I guess I hyper voice now. Negligible damage from that, and we're gonna dent the hell out of this. Thunder Wave is kinda cool. He never wins this 1v1 though, so Gardevoir is just gonna be able to kill this Cresselia for free. Not for free, for free, but like for free, you know? He needs one more hit for Brave Bird to be able to kill me with Corby. Might outspeed me now? I'm not sure. 161. I'm running a lot of speed investment. Shouldn't outspeed me. So the Cresselia is dealt with, which opens up Infernape into a better spot against this Corviknight now. This Corviknight's in range of Flare Blitz, not quite in range of close combat. 
which would be probably what I would want to click in most scenarios, which means I need more chip on the Garchomp. Okay, so now I'm in range of Brave Bird um, from Corviknight, but Gardevoir picks off the Cress. Anything can come in here and kill me, except probably the Morpico. I, I would doubt that um, that burned Morpico is going to be able to kill me here. But it would be faster than me. So it is the Garchomp that comes in. I don't really want to let this get a scale shot off for free, and I don't really have a better way to answer this, so we're just going to do that. And I guess go Dragapult? Dragonurge should handle this. If the Corviknight comes in, I just Dragon Dance on it, on it, right? I think I just go Pult on this. Garchomp. If it's... Well, we know it's not Life Orb. It could be banned, to be fair. If it's Choice Band, do I die to Earthquake? Most of the time. But I guess we would find that out. So let's see what sort of set he is. By bringing in the Polterino and just going for a Dragon Dirts. More Pico. Drops. Corvi comes back in. Now, I know that you are specially defensive, so why would I not just Dragon Dance in your face? That is, in fact, exactly what I'm going to do. As he roosts. If I Dragon Dance again, is Phantom Force or it's a roll? He says GG. I, you know what? I'm just going to Phantom Force here. I, I don't need to do anything else. Make him miss the Brave Bird. He can roost if he wants. 64. I guess I Dragon Dance again then. Then we Phantom Force. So this is a fat roll at 90, uh, at 100. We don't get it. Um. Okay, so actually I did 84, which means he's got a little bit of physical bulk. Let's say 100, which means I Dragon Dance again, and now we win, I think. There should be no way that plus 3 misses out on a kill against this. And then I can just Dragon Dance the Garch- or Dragon Arts the Garchomp. Yeah, GG. GG's to Dom, my man. Uh, that was a very fun game. I enjoyed the hell out of that. Uh, I think I played really well um, around the Araquid in particular and the Morpico. I think I played well around the Morpico too. But let me know what you guys thought. Uh, next week we take on Jed and the Adelaide Overheat. So keep an eye out for that. And I will catch you guys for the next one. Bye.